The Kingsley Art Club presents another in our series of artist studio visits, which are in lieu of our in-person guest lecture series. This visit, as well as our other arts programs, is made possible by the dues and contributions of the members of the Kingsley to further our mission of bringing arts and arts education to the community. Welcome to the Kingsley Art Club's Fall 2021 programming. We are so happy to have all of you with us, Kingsley members and Kingsley friends. And we're continuing the series that we started last spring, no, last year, um, in uh, visiting artist studios and letting us have a chance to see an artist at work or to see the artist thinking about what he or she is doing. Um, since we can't be in the museum yet, we continue these series that we think has been very effective, and we're glad that you're with us today. Let me introduce William Ishmael, who's our program chair, who will tell us about our speaker today, Shauna McDaniels. Thank you, Nancy. So a few weeks ago, Lawrence Campling and I, Lawrence is our videographer, and he's been doing all these uh, in-studio visits and doing a great job, visited Shauna McDaniels at the Sojourner Truth Museum, we had an interesting few hours with her. We found her very forthright, um, engaging. Um, and she describes herself as an artist, a muralist, and a teacher. But one of the things we observed as we were there that afternoon is she's a catalyst for the community. She's really kind of a remarkable person. So I hope you enjoy our visit with Shona McDaniels. The images that you see on the wall right here uh, are of the Great Migration. Now, of course, I'm an artist, I'm a muralist, and I'm a teacher. And the Harlem Renaissance is one of my favorite, favorite uh, moments in history for African American people. I always tell everyone that I entered into this world with a paintbrush. Uh, in my hand and that um, I just feel so honored that the most divine has allowed me to be able to create. And I draw my inspiration uh, from my mother and my grandmother. My mother raised four children by herself as a single parent and my grandmother, 10 children and watching these two women be able to navigate as single black women and um, support their family. I wanted to be able to depict this strength and this love and this compassion all on canvas. I lived in Germany for about a year. I was able to go there and visit a friend and be there as a tourist. And while there, I was able to teach art on the base and I created a ton of art. I had a lot of alone time. So when I arrived back here in the United States, I had many uh, paintings to exhibit. So I started looking around for galleries that I uh, could exhibit in, and I heard of the Arden Art Center. And I had a few paintings in that exhibit, and I met one of the most amazing uh, women that has been inspirational in my life. In my life. Um, and her name was Alpha Buton. And she invited me to share studio space with uh, the building that is currently across the street from the Gunther's Ice Cream. It, the whole complex um, was uh, filled with African-American artists who had studio space. Um, the Zawadi Gallery was there. It was the first African-American gallery there. And it was just amazing for me. She was uh, working with Celebration Arts. Uh, they were the fiscal agent for the work that she was doing. Later, I worked with her to develop the Visual Arts Development Center, and we um, 
curated exhibits. Um, we serve children and families, creating many different art uh, programs. Um, we uh, was located there for about three years, and later we moved on to Del Paso Boulevard. And as you know, Del Paso Boulevard was really hot as far as Second Saturdays were concerned. The entire boulevard, people walking up and down and visiting different galleries. I usually paint from the comfort of my home. I usually do my painting, you know, anywhere from 11 o'clock to 3 a.m., sometimes 4 a.m. My favorite medium is oils. I do a combination of both oil and acrylic on the canvas because I feel that I'm able to create more realism working with the oils on the face and the skin tones and then everything else I cover with acrylics. I find that in dark, dark, melanated skin tones, I just find every color of the rainbow. And I mean, I find blues and greens and purples and um, pinks and yellows and orange and reds, all of these tones I, I find. It, it just really, excites me and uplift my, my soul. But I work with all mediums. I work with charcoal, uh, pastels, acrylic, and then recently I've been getting into collaging, um, working with fabric, quilting. At about the age of seven and eight, I spent countless hours in the garage with my grandmother quilting. The show that I just took down was of uh, two quilts that I helped create. I actually work with the uh, Wellness Center in Del Paso Heights, and uh, these were healing quilts. Wide open walls um, allowed me to be able to paint um, images of these amazing women that have inspired me. And um, I invited two other wonderful artists, female artists, to paint with me, uh, Daphne Burgess and Sonia Fay. And um, I called it um, having my seat at the table, and it was very fitting for me because I felt like I was finally getting the opportunity to have my seat at the table. I recently received a grant from the city of Sacramento as a lead artist to create a mural at 6666 Valley High Drive, right off of Mac Road. It's a huge wall. I'm really excited about the fact that um, I will be able to uh, engage with children and youth and the community at large through the process of mural making. That's been one of our programs for here for many years, uh, mural beautification. Uh, and what's unique about the mural programs that we've had here over the years is that we've always invited the entire community to come out and be a part of the mural making process and paint right alongside with the artists. And I think that Giving the community the opportunity to come and be a part of this process makes them feel more uh, invested in the 
whole process of creating art and feel better about their community. All of the crucial information that they needed for survival was in that green book. We opened up this new space in March. First we were called the Sojourner Truth Art Center. Uh, later we changed the name to the Sojourner Truth Multicultural Center. And then uh, we uh, finally changed our name to the Sojourner Truth African American Museum. And uh, we've been able to continue to do this very important work that I've been doing from the beginning, and that's to serve the children and the youth. The name Sojourner Truth came about because as a little girl, I would always draw images of Sojourner Truth. I didn't even know anything about her. I, was, I just knew there was this strength that I was drawn to in her face, um, the way she stood. And um, I knew someday later on when I found out about her work and who she was that I wanted to do something to honor her legacy. She journeyed around um, giving these powerful, powerful speeches about freedom and justice and equality. Even though she couldn't read or write, but God gave her the strength and the knowledge and the power to accomplish all of the things that she set out to do. And that was to fight for freedom, justice, and equality. Uh, for not just the enslaved Africans, but for human beings, period, because white women were having a difficult time too. So she uh, fought for women's rights as well, for all women's rights. I always tell uh, everyone that African American history is American history. And with our new space, we have over a hundred new exhibits. Um, and there's so much information here. The experience has just been amazing for those individuals that do come here. Um, not only do they get the opportunity to learn about African American history, uh, black cowboys, um, the uh, Harlem Renaissance, the Great Migration, the uh, first African American school teacher right here to our right. Children love learning about this uh, woman right here. We had Girl Scouts here yesterday uh, learning about uh, women in history. So she was one of their favorites when they came yesterday. Just knowing that African American children and all children can come and learn about the important role that African Americans have contributed to um, our society. Lots and lots of contributions have been made and they need to know this, they need to understand this. And um, for African American children to come here in particular and see other African American children as docents has been very uplifting for them. Just that alone, because we're training, because we work with youth, we're training them to be able to share these stories. And it's been very uplifting for them to step into this role. Uh, and they know it's an important role. And uh, they continue to study. Our youth are our future. And um, for them to be able to know their history, no matter what race, it's very uplifting for them to be able to know who they are because if they know their history and, um, and they can identify with greatness, then they will uplift their soul and their spirit and they will function better in society and they will be able to love more people in their surroundings. And that's what we need in this world is more love and peace and harmony.
Well, that was quite a concluding statement to Shauna's video. Um, I mean, absorb that for a few minutes. Um, and then, and then I hope I hope you were intrigued by the Sojourner Truth Museum. I, I've been there a couple of times, and it's it's a fascinating educational experience. Um, it's it's worth it's well worth a visit or more because it's just packed with information and facts. It's on Florin Road at 24th, and I hope you all take advantage of the opportunity to go visit. To wrap this up, let me uh, turn it back to Nancy Lawrence, our president. Hello, everyone. Again, I think Shauna McDaniels is really impressive. And I was thinking that a lot of you would enjoy seeing the Sojourner Truth Museum. It's an experience to learn about African-American history and see the work. Some of it is Shauna's work that's in the murals there, but also to experience, as she talked about it, the high school docents. The two girls on the day that I was there with William uh, were just, they're very sincere, they're well-informed, they're very excited about giving us this information, and I was really impressed. I think you have to make a reservation to be sure that the girls are available. It will probably have to be after school hours, but we can get you in touch if you would like to make a visit to the Sojourner Truth Museum. And we urge you to share this video with your friends and to take this as part of our Kingsley experience as we go ahead. We have two additional visits to the uh, in, in studios or with collectors in this case. Alan Templeton, who is a collector who has been very generous to the Crocker and is a retired UC Davis professor, has given pieces to the European collection. And he's going to talk to us about how he thinks, how he's given things, why he did it, why he chose the pieces he did. And we're hoping that then we can also schedule a visit with docents in place so that you can see the works in person that he has given. And then we have John Yoyogi Forbes, um, who is an interesting local artist, and his work will be available to us through his studio. So we'll be back to the traditional studio visit then. So we look forward to you joining us and we look forward to the possibility that after our video visits, we will continue with on um, video visits, but we'll also continue with meetings in the Crocker. We just heard that the auditorium has been used. So the next step is for the museum to be open on Wednesday. So let it, us know if you're excited about doing any of these things and thank you for being here. <laughs>